this is Nancy Wirt, and I'm here to interview Miss Judy Whiting. Um, let's see, full disclosure, Judy is my bestie okay. here in Vallejo. Okay. Uh, we met at the library uh, over six years ago. I had been there for about two weeks, and uh, she was a long time, she is a long time user of the library, and she came and sat down with her list of movies and books, and mostly movies, to uh, look for. So she said, who are you? And I was giving her my bona fides, and when I introduced myself uh, as my name is Nancy, and that's the name of her dear departed sister. So we had an instant connection then, and then over the course of speaking, we found out that her family is originally from Fresno, where I am from. So we made an even more connection, and we have just been besties since then. And uh, to be clear, she, her daughter and two grandchildren uh, at one point were my roommates and still might be in the future. So we are very much connected. So um, this whole thing is to make her look good, but I just wanted to uh, put that out and make clear. Now, Miss Judy Ray Whiting is a retired musical theater actress, voice coach and acting teacher. Mm -hmm. Director, um, a director of Broadway Babies. Broadway Babies, which is a children's Acting, performing, group. performing group with workshops, etc. A, a, a class, but yes, we, a class, we, we a performing perform. group. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, never forget Miss Contra Costa, 1965. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I wanted you to meet Miss Judy White, Judy Whiting, my best. All right, say hi. Hello. Hello. Well, it was kismet, darling. Yeah. Simply kismet, because when I saw your fabulous red hair, mm -hmm. and when you said Nancy and Fresno, it was like, yep. it had to be. Yeah, you know, we and were, then we started talking, and then it's just been, it's just been since then. fun. We're, we're at Mare Island. With leaves falling with on leaves top falling of us. With leaves falling on us, but we were just trying to find a place that wasn't... Um, too windy. Yeah, that was, that was Cause it's nice. Typhoon blowing. It rained, it rained yesterday, but it's nice today. Yes, lovely. Here. Yeah, yes. and there's a lot of little hidden spots all around Vallejo and Mare Island and stuff that mm -hmm. one can find some place to sit. Mm -hmm. All right, so I wanted to find out. This basically is an interview for people who live in Vallejo and have for a while, and basically, we're um, I'm interviewing people. Um, who are from here or have lived here quite a while? You've or been here. Wind up here. Wind up. You've been here for fifteen. Oh no. Oh no. I hope not. Twelve. Uh, let's see. Because you well, were at your old place for twelve 10. or th thirteen years. Yeah, it was so. an accident. Yeah, because you were here. in you were in Concord and other places. Well, I was kind of like the the girl who came to dinner. You know, when I <laughs> when I um, I had to leave the. the the funky Victorian I lived in at Crockett, which was oh, really Crockett. cool, but it had so many stairs, I had health issues, blah, yeah. blah, blah. So yeah, yeah. I uh, wound up here, I wound up there. I was the girl who came to dinner and stayed a while. Uh, and then my daughter moved to Vallejo in a teeny tiny little house, and then we, we left that. But I, uh, it, yeah, just circumstances. Mm -hmm, I honestly mm -hmm. can't remember, you know. Uh, and then I was in a one apartment for a number of years. And, and that's then, when I met you because you were in that little studio right down the street from my house. Georgia Street, yes. I yeah, used to walk George. down to the library always with my little grandson, Eric. You know, yeah. he was so cute with his little book underneath his arm, clutching his hand. You know, I, I, I loved the library since I was a kid mm -hmm. when my grandparents had a home built in Carmel. And uh, I'm talking in the 50s. And... Um, uh, we would go there for uh, holidays and, and summer times, and uh, the bookmobile would come by. Oh, I love that bookmobile. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's when I discovered, I thought, I'm going to read this book. It was Tarzan. Mm. And it may sound, you know, because it's all been so blown up out of things. That is a wonderful book. And it mm. was a wonderful story, and I just loved it. And I have, I always actually wanted to be a librarian, you know. And then it was, by the time I was 10, 11, I was singing, you know. Yeah. So, uh, um, I, it, then it became theater, but right. I always just, I love books. I collect antique children's books. Yeah. You know, I love paper. 
Yeah. And um, it's the stories too, because and then you then you become a musical theater actress. Did you you decided you wanted to do that at a pretty young age? You just got into the theater at in what, middle school, high school? Well, yeah, it was junior. Well, junior. trying to think. I see. I was let's see. In 1959. I was in the ninth grade and actually in high school. That's okay. what they did. Yeah, there. Yeah. Junior high, no, there was. But I was, I was, I was singing a lot on my own. Right. You know? okay. And I remember across the street there were these kids we played with. And father hated my singing. You know, mm -hmm. it, it annoyed him. And but I was always, oh, you know, always <clears throat> going around like that. And then I had a, one of my mother's friends came over. <clears throat> I don't know if I could do it now. Maybe not in great voice, but. Uh, she hit the piano key and she, and she went, ah, mm -hmm. and I imitated her. It, yeah. it was there. It, you know, it was just God given, born, given there. I didn't know yeah. it was there, you yeah. know. And so then they hunted for, I think I was maybe 11, 12. So they were hunting for a voice teacher for me. Right. And I had two. They, they actually didn't know what to do with me, you know, because right. I was more operatic. With yeah. that. Finally, after high school, and I did, and I did, started doing things and plays in junior in high and yeah. then in high school when I got closer to the 12th grade had the lead in a uh, soap opera operetta Ooh. back then and it was it, uh, looking back it was hard at the time probably wouldn't be now but it was it was fun very dramatic and mm -hmm. uh, so I was always doing stuff you right. know and when I was 16 uh, we lived in El Cerrito and there was a wonderful theater that was just like five minutes away and I remember going down for the first time auditioning out of school for the play Junior Miss with Contra Costa Civic Theater. And that's when I got started working there and awesome. doing plays. And um, now kids even start way younger, but that was more my my time. And finally found um, a voice teacher at, uh, oh, yeah. I can't remember how we found him, but San, San Francisco State. And, nice. Uh, and he was a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Were you supposed to get one of those, right? To get you... Not really, because no? what they do is, see, like, it'd be... Now, when I, years later, started having students of my own, you don't uh, discourage them. Uh, you encourage them. Uh, and and he ta taught you what not to do. Well, yeah, you, absolutely. I mean, he was... Back, that was about 63, and I was out of high school, and I went to San Francisco State. And... Um, in that day, in that period of that 50s, 60s, into the 70s, they were called, your, they were opera snobs. Oh. If you didn't study opera or go into that, you might as well just throw yourself off the, the bridge. Because musical theater and all that was always looked down upon. Because mm. of people like Ethel Merman and stuff like oh. that. Because all they did was belt and they were loud mm. and they, you know, so they weren't real singers. Oh, and yeah. uh, uh, I always resented that because I loved. I didn't like opera. I didn't love opera. I loved right. musical theater. So I didn't do what he wanted me to do. He wanted oh. me to give opera concerts. I didn't want, I, that wasn't my thing. I yeah. didn't have a love or a drive for it. And right. so uh, uh, I loved um, the Broadway shows. Yeah. I, I loved all that. What was the first one you, first a Broadway I mean, show? Yeah, like, you know. You never were actually on Broadway. No, I was not on no, Broadway. No, no. But you did a lot of theater here on the I West did Coast. did it locally. I did a lot Local. of... Uh, I worked in Walnut Creek. I worked in Concord. I worked in Piedmont. Uh, but I worked all throughout the Bay Area. And uh, later on, I worked with a wonderful group in San Francisco called 42nd Street Moon, mm -hmm. where they we did... Uh, I did nine shows with them. We did um, musicals that hadn't been produced in, like... 50 or 60 years, old okay. Cole old Porter, stuff, yeah. old George Gershwin, or all those, and, and Jubilee by Cole Porter is a wonderful show. Yeah. That was the first one I did. I got in by accident. Uh, uh, the woman couldn't do the role, so I got called to do it. Oh. I knew the musical director. And it was just one of the most fabulous roles I've ever had. It was like, sometimes, I think, I think of it as putting on a glove, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> the glove fits. That's how a party is. Nice. And uh, that was just a fabulous role and they wound up doing that show <laughs> and I got you hooked on the whole process huh? no well this is way after oh, oh, oh. way after and uh, uh, with this Julie I have to say this they did the show four times by the third time I was the only remaining cast member because oh. it was a part that just became such a part of me mm -hmm. part of the thing they never replaced it and yeah. uh, I loved it and it was a great professional group no what started it was just me as a kid I was yeah. like 10 11 you know, to dance, sing. playing around, and my grandmother yeah. looked out, and I was actually 
dancing on top of the car once, you know, <laughs> and uh, I don't remember that, but I was always, that was always there, I think. Yeah. And then and then when I got into plays, yeah, I remember in 1959, the drama teacher taking us to uh, San Francisco to see West Side Story the first time it left the first touring show oh, okay. that they ever left New York. Wow. And uh, Larry Kurt was in it. He is the original Tony, so he was there. And what I remember, I don't really remember seeing the show, but I remember getting in early and watching them warm up. I do remember oh, that. And it was lovely. always just so thrilling. You know, Ooh. that was the most, that yeah. was theater was just so exciting. Yeah. Then, then all through high school, I did stuff and I sang and did, you know, was always, that was who I was. When I, would, when I went to a high school reunion, years, 25 years later, this guy, Marty, came up to me. Marty was kind of the James Dean of, of, of the high school. He was mm -hmm. rough, you know, he was nothing like they are now. Mm -hmm. and it, but Mar I'll never forget Marty. And you would think that, that those kids like don't pay any attention. He came up to me and he remembered that I sang mm -hmm. things, music, art, touches mm -hmm. people. And he yeah. remembered that. You know, and I actually sang for one of the high school reunions because I was asked to sing at the Claremont Hotel when I was graduating. So I sang one of the songs I did all those years uh -huh. at, ago at the reunion. And uh, one guy asked me, he said, uh, what do you get a voice like that? Like maybe you just shop for it. Yeah, you know, you know, we're going like to pick up that, one of those. Right <laughs> I said, and I firmly believe this, it's a God-given talent. Mm -hmm. Some, some you have to, so I've had some students that I think, oh, what am I going to do? But they have to work harder, more there. And then there's some, I had one girl, just a glorious voice, born with that sound. Yeah. You know, and so it's, all these these certain stars on Broadway that are just beyond fabulous, that's a gift. Yeah. Because if it wasn't, the theater would, we'd all be singing and we'd all be dancing. Everybody could do it. Everybody yeah. would be doing this and yeah. we don't. And right. it's, it's very special. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, you did get to travel. Oh, well, through Contra Costa Civic Theater, uh, we had a director that uh, worked in Poland, and he'd come back and forth to the States, to Poland, and then to Budapest. Oh. And he kept promoting it, uh, that they were doing nonsense over there, and mm -hmm. we were doing nonsense at the show, which, by the way, is a very difficult show that I would never do again. <laughs> but we had, there were good people, and it was thrilled when it was over. But he got us a free trip to Europe, to uh, perform in Budapest, two nights I think it was, over there, and um, on a wonderful uh, music box stage from all Ooh. Europe, you know. And so that was a, it was a free trip to Europe. It was wonderful, and we performed it over there. And uh, that is my one stint in Europe, and it was a nice way to go. And we stayed on the stayed on the uh, Blue Danube, which isn't blue, and uh, <laughs> and there was an antique shop that I was way more interested in than going to the rehearsal. <laughs> oh, and um, so that was uh, quite an experience. Yeah. I remember flying when we flew, it was, oh, that was a long flight, long to, flight yeah. to Budapest. And I'm sitting next to some guy, he said, oh, where are you going? He said, Egypt. I'm like, oh. And, you know, it was just exotic, you know, that yeah. you're going to Egypt. And uh, so it was, um, yeah, that was quite, a, quite an experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm trying to think of other stuff that you've <laughs> talked about that you've done. Oh, that you brought up the antique shop. Oh, mm -hmm. that's another thing that has actually brought us together as best friends is our mutual love of the thrifting <laughs> yard sale, um, garage sale you shopping. Got it. You got it. Mm -hmm. Oh, give me an, an estate sale and a cup of coffee, and I'm set. <laughs> uh, you know, a good a good uh, sale friend and. Judy and I have that same. Yes, we've kind of, Yeah, we've gone to many and, different places and found yes. some fabulous things. Yes. Fabulous things. Yeah. And she'll find the best sales. She's like she can sniff them out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, see, the only that, part that makes it, the only one that makes it better is her granddaughter Angelina, because <laughs> she's really good at sniffing stuff out too. And oh, see, she's eleven now. Yeah, she'll hold up something. Isn't this what you were looking for? Yeah. And, and I might walk right by. I don't know when I started that. Roger, I wish I'd started it sooner and paid more attention. Because even as a kid, when I was around nine or ten, I was always putting scrapbooks together. Mm -hmm. And actually, my granddaughter is is coming along doing a lot of the same stuff. And I would go down the library. Then in those days, you could take the bus and walk down and go by yourself and go yeah. to the library. Do all that. I'd look up. Oh yeah. I'd look up. 
who I was looking for, which was Gone with the Wind uh, and, and, and things like that, and Judy Garland, I love Judy Garland, and then go, then there was this fabulous uh, paper store up University, mm -hmm. all these old magazines, and I'm talking in the early 60s, so mm. they were, the stuff was dirt cheap, yeah. they had everything, that, you know, so I, then I'd go back and I'd put scrapbooks together, I oh, loved all yeah. that, and then I can't remember when I started going to garage sales, but maybe, oh, I don't remember, I just started doing that a lot, and uh, uh, the first time you stumbled on one and you discovered something so. fabulous wish, and you've been hooked ever since? Yeah, I would go to the thrift stores. I remember Angelina yeah. was about three or so. And take her and, I'd, and then you could kind of be a little laissez-faire that you aren't now. But I'd glance over and she'd be playing with a typewriter or something. you know. And, and that, was, uh, that was 71, 72. Because the things were coming out of the homes in from the 50s and the 60s. And the stores had fabulous. Stuff. Oh yeah, not yeah. like it is now, where you can't find anything, or it goes on eBay or something like yeah, that. See, none yeah. of that existed. Yeah, because back in the seventies, they're selling stuff from the fifties as nobody wants this. At, in the seventies, nobody wanted it. Oh, I remember standing there thinking, "Do I want to spend two dollars on that thing?" Which, of course, was dirt cheap. Yeah. And I, I that's when I started my antique Santa Claus collection because mm. they brought out fabulous yeah, things. Yeah. And I had a wonderful Santa. I only paid $2.10 for it. And the dog ate half of it. Oh, and I want to tell you that that was a very valuable Santa. So I was mm. quite upset. But I, that's when I, I really loved that just as much as I did doing theater. And I, mm -hmm. and I remember when I did, when I was MAME, in MAME, I'd go out in the morning early enough, you know, and one, one sale she brought out this great big box it was filled with silk flowers like a dope I didn't take the whole thing oh. but I did take some and then this guy same place had a jewelry box filled filled with jewelry and all kinds of stuff and these boobs that were looking at it couldn't could decide and he said it was $10 for the box I said I'll take it he slammed that box like that and I thought how could you not yeah. have to decide through all that but a I whole remember, box of a whole $10 box. It had, yeah. oh it had uh, you know just it was just really fun and uh, uh, that doesn't happen very often no. but I remember what I was doing Eliza in My Fair Lady my mind occasionally would wander and I would think the next day is broad sale and da 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 I'm standing <laughs> there you know <laughs> you doing dialogue or singing which is a terrible thing to do you, you cannot let your mind you need to be present like yeah oh yes because you, you, your memory will go you know, oh yeah I had that happen once it was awful and uh so that was a that is a big part of my life. I love that. The hunt of the, you never know what you're going to find. Oh, it's yeah. a treasure hunt, huh? and um, it can get very competitive. But uh, yeah. it's it's I found my most wonderful things that mm -hmm. way. And everyone that does that has the same stories. They all have that. But they have found their favorite thing. Yeah, that, and they've happened upon the treasure. Yeah, I found. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was with you when I found my best deal, where I found. A pair of over-the-knee blue oh, suede boots, boots. Yeah. for $15 that fit me Where perfectly. Was that? I'm to that was that big sale, the Flea city market? sale, the citywide sale in oh, Port Richmond. Fort Richmond. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. See, that's so fun. In the last two years, because right. of the COVID thing, uh, this last time people put it together because they were tired of that. Did it, but it wasn't the same as it yeah. was run by a specific group. Right. So uh, I'm hoping they'll get back to that. But yes, that was. That was a lot of fun, yeah. you know. You just never, never know. It's harder and harder to find things, and the thrift stores forget it, you know. Yeah, they're putting their stuff on, uh, on on eBay. Yeah, and, uh, except for our little penny store run by those. Oh, the ten cent thrift store. The ten cent thrift store. Yeah, <laughs> we got to get back over there at some point. There's a local place in Vallejo that's run by some little old church ladies. Mm -hmm. Like you can still find stuff in there. Here, here's a you know a t-shirt for fifty cents. You <laughs> yeah, know, still right, stuff for right. less than a dollar. Yeah, mm -hmm, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, tell me about some of your favorite shows that you were in. Composers, folks, famous folks, and because I know you've met some some major people. Well, I did meet when I uh, started doing theater. Uh, I was out of high school and married. Uh, when did I get married? 68. So, um, I think I was 25 at the time. And actually, it's kind of late to be doing <coughs> leads and stuff. Now, they're 19 and 8, and they're doing all these big shows on Broadway. It wasn't like that back then. And so, uh, I, uh, 
I can't remember if I auditioned or if Louie asked me to do Eliza in My Fair Lady. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I think I was about 25, 26 then. And that's a big show, a big part. Uh, that was the first huge role I had, and it kind of terrified me. I because bet. he gave a speech where we have to do this and we have to do that. It was so intense that I, I said, Louie, I, I don't think I can do it. Mm -hmm. He came to the house, and he was lovely, reassured me, you know, and uh, it, it, he didn't realize, you know, he... Put, uh, put put the fear in you, yeah. and uh, I was taken into a room to get a Cockney accent. It's not British; it's Cockney. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you get it, you never forget it. Oh, I'm a good girl. Oh, I am. You never <laughs> forget the Cockney. And she was very good, and I got that down because everybody laughs at Dick Van Dyke how bad his Cockney was in Mary yeah. Poppins. You know, he just never yeah, quite infamous. nailed it. Yeah. You know, and he admits it. But uh, anyway, uh, it was, I love Eliza. Eliza is a wonderful role. It's George Bernard Shaw, you know, and the, the lines are so much lifted from the play and it's beautiful. the music is wonderful. I actually did that part twice and we just reversed the blocking. And I've never, I don't like to repeat roles, but I did do that, you know. And yeah. then I just started doing, uh, um, doing more shows, uh, kind of one right after the other. After we finished My Fair Lady, he called and he said, what show do you want to do? And, oh. I, and I said, oh, Sound of Music. So we did Sound of Music for 10 long weeks. Oh. And uh, that's a long time. Back in the day when I was doing that in the 60s, 70s, you didn't uh, perform all week long like you do now. Yeah. And we were, he rehearsed very quickly, which was good because now they rehearse very slowly. And uh, we... We were doing just strictly Friday and Saturday nights. I don't even think we were doing matinees, which is, which you do all of that now. And uh, matinees during the week, all that stuff. So it was it was quite nice to do that. And I, I like Maria, but the problem is she's boring. You know, after doing mm. some of the other stuff that I've done, I, and my, of course my mother, oh, it's my favorite part, Judy. It's, and it was just, she's lovely. Julie Andrews was the epitome of, of, of the fabulous, you know, Maria. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just wasn't, I did it. <laughs> I would never <laughs> do it again. But then that, then I got a call to do, um, uh, I did, uh, I got a call to do audition for a little night music at D uh, Diablo Valley College. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh gosh, I don't think so. I just finished a show. I don't think I could. And I had told Louis, the director, I said, oh, I'm not, he said, what are you going to do? I said, nothing. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm exhausted. And so when he heard I was doing, oh, he was so mad. He said, she said she wasn't going to do anything. And they, directors, if you do a lot of theater at their place, they get possessive and they want mm. you to just stay with that theater. I never could do that. I, I yeah. want to work all around. You work with different directors. And it's, and, it, and it's much better as a performer to right. do that than just stick with one group. But anyway, he got over it. And, <laughs> uh, and then when I walked into that theater to sing, for audition for that, it was just, the theater was fabulous huge big wonderful theater and I had never was not really familiar with Sondheim I had never done anything sung anything with Sondheim or anything and he is become he is my favorite composer the thing about Sondheim is his music never gets easy it's always <laughs> hard it's always challenging it's always keeps you on your toe when you do Rodgers and Hammerstein and stuff you get a little you, you uh, kind of rest in it a little. It's not as um, as, as as difficult. Well, it, nothing's as difficult. As I had I've known pianists that play for everything that will not play on time because oh. it's so difficult. And uh, you know, it, and he's so brilliant. Uh, he used to do crossword to New York crossword puzzle. I mean, he, he's just you know really brilliant. And because um, he started out strictly being a lyricist. He's the lyricist for West Side Story and Gypsy, but that's not what he wanted to do. He was talked into doing that. Mm. Oscar Hammerstein was his mentor and said, do West Side Story yeah. because you're working with fabulous people. And so he did it. And then he started writing all his shows, music and lyric. That's what he oh, wanted okay. to do. And, but A Little Night Music is my, I guess I've done about 65 shows, is my favorite show because it's, it's so beautiful to look at. It's so wonderfully written. And we had a wonderful cast. And uh, that was the only show I was sorry to see end because I really had a handsome leaning man. Everything about it was what you would say magical. It was a wonderful production. And oh. I just loved it. 
and um, I can't remember the order of different things that I did, but one of the shows I did, uh, most of, actually my favorite shows have come by accident. Mm -hmm. When I did the show in this, this group in the city and this uh, uh, little night music, I would never have gone out for it but because I was asked to. It just turned out to be wonderful, you know, and I really great memories of that, you know, and yeah. my, my director used to ask me to do leads without a, in other words, yeah. I would come down and audition, but I was already precast, which, right. which I do not like, because it is not fair to the people that, re that, right. that, um, uh, that work and work and work that want that lead, right. or want that part and it's already been cast, you must announce that. So what happened to me was he had asked me to do Dolly, to be Dolly. And I wound up, I was working at a store, and someone came in and they said, oh, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm going to do Dolly. Well, he blew up. He, he was upset, you know, and he took the part away from me. Oh. And uh, in other words, I'd have to come down and audition, but guess what? I didn't go and audition for it. And he wrote me a letter saying, you know, we knew each other very well. We were as much friends as we were director, mm -hmm. uh, director, actor. And he... Um, wrote a letter, in other words, I can't remember all of what it said, but one of the lines I remember is some, you know, you tend to do anything to get a part. And of course I wrote right back and said, I would never do anything to get a part. Yeah. And I said, let me tell you something. It is not fair to people that come and audition. Right. And when you did a role, you were announced. And so we, we patched it up. And then he said, will you do Maine for, Aww. and then he, and he said, you can tell anybody you want, and they announced it. And that is exactly how it should be done. It's not fair to fellow actors that want a part that's already been taken, you know, that isn't announced. So anyway, right. we went past that. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, people want to say that everything's on the internet now. Everything is not on the internet mm -hmm. yet. No, there are movies that they come right out and say, this is not uh, on DVD. Like, yeah. like, I don't think that you will... I wish you could, uh, darn it, the one with Rita Hayworth uh, yeah. on front page. A new, yeah. I, can't, I can't quite remember how that was. Uh, but that, that's a very good story. Rita Hayworth was very good in that. Yeah. And because uh, she was she was just one of the most fabulous dancers in Hollywood. A mm -hmm. little underrated because of Ann Miller and especially Eleanor Powell, who was the yeah. greatest dancer. Nobody danced like she did. Yeah. And uh, they caught Ann Miller copies a little of her movements but uh, Rita Hayworth was fabulous and oh. she danced twice with Fred Astaire and, and and Gene Kelly and she was oh she was wonderful it was anything she couldn't do but she danced she started out dancing with her father oh, wow. you know and um, that's an interesting story and, um, <clears throat> and her hairline is interesting because it was down low when Hollywood got a hold of her they changed the hairline and gave her a widow's peak huh. you know, and so she was not didn't look like she became you know, and yeah. who is just was a marvelous dancer and actor. She was mm -hmm. very good. Story on front page. Oh, something okay. like, I think that's the name. And she was very good in that. That's a good yeah. story. <clears throat> yeah, you find you're you're always asking for the, the some of those older ones yes. that some of them I is some of them are easier to find than others. Right. You know? Right. So. Like I don't even think that's that's out. I don't yeah. think it's on. De I don't think it's out yet. Yeah. Some yeah. are so obscure. I just think they're plain forgotten mm -hmm. about. You know, unless someone resurrects them or asks. You know, or they show up on some movie, some oddball movie yeah. thing that people are into. Then that creates that interest. Other than that, they just wither fade away. away and fade yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a shame because some of that old stuff is really great. Some of it's you know. Well, weird. terribly dated, and yeah. and some of them aren't. But I. I um, my money is on the black and white because yeah. black and white with the moody photography and the lighting and all that is fabulous. Yeah. And uh, that's why Hitchcock and some of those insisted on black and white. And mm. uh, uh, everyone always wondered, oh, why didn't uh, uh, Billy Wilder do uh, um, something like it hot in color? Mm. Well, number he said number mainly because of the weird makeup the women had on. It would have looked, the guys had on because it would have looked so weird, you know, that, that black yeah. and white soften that up make oh, it look wow. better so it's very yeah. interesting uh, the reasoning behind stuff yeah, yeah about different things fascinating and, yeah uh, i've always always loved film as a kid i was into movies yeah. and the the movie thing that when i grew up there was a tv show called pippa goes to the movies that was every morning at 8 30 <clears throat> 
and I think it was late 50s, early 60s, and that's when I discovered the stars, and that's when I just fell in love with, especially the musicals, Jane Powell and Jeanette MacDonald, and, and then I discovered Pedro Armanderas. <laughs> <laughs> he was a handsome, wonderful actor from Mexico, but he also did crossover films with Henry mm -hmm. Vonda mm -hmm. and John Wayne. He did nice. several with John Wayne. He was a wonderful actor. There's a theater in Mexico City named after him, Pedro oh. Armanderas Theater. And he, oh, he was handsome. And he was mm -hmm. just, he was, uh, that was the beginning of my, my love affair with Latin, Latin love affair. And yes. uh, because he, he was so good looking, but he was a wonderful actor. He mm -hmm. was really good. He did a lot of wonderful Mexican films. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, with Dolores Del Rio, who did crossover many American mm -hmm. films, and she was Mexican also. But um, uh, yeah, then I just, I just, Judy Garland, all of those, mm -hmm. just that's who you saw every morning. And back then, it was no big deal. Because that's like I have old TV guides and they're mm. hilarious. Yeah. Because there's like four shows to choose from, mm. and then you know, that's when they were, would show all that stuff. Then when Ted Turner bought all those films up, it became this huge deal to see these movies. And how yeah. rare it became! Like on TV, it's a big deal. It's on TCM or whatever. Yeah. But back then, they were on every day. That's mm. when you saw when you I discovered John Hodiak and uh, and all these these just these wonderful actors you yeah. know that you and Betty Davis and and I put a Betty Davis scrapbook together and all that stuff I just I it just it was very very um exciting mm -hmm. beautiful back then you know yeah. and it started changing really in the late 60s when the 70s came in Easy Rider and all that stuff the whole thing changed the sounds of Vallejo <laughs> yes how about the uh the Oh, it's constant. It, it's like the city, the, the uh, fire engines and oh, the police yeah. and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Now, you know, since I've been here living, having, I, I've got to live all over the country. Mm -hmm. you know, from Fresno, but got to mm -hmm. live all over the country, and um, you know, I, I, I like to think that I'm pos a positive, leading person to try find the good in everything. Mm -hmm. So I try to, you know, pay attention to the never, good parts. Never ever have you ever, because to me was ever a negative person. Never. Mm, well, we all have our moments. Yeah, we have our moments. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Robots. Trying, you know, trying yeah. to look at the good parts because you know I could sit here and wax poetic about the potholes in Vallejo, but <laughs> yeah. I'd rather you know pay attention to how wonderful the weather is. You know. Yeah, because it never gets. It it might get really hot, like. But it goes away bit, yeah. because of the water here, yeah. you know, and then it never, yes, it does. It has, reminds me a lot of El Cerrito because that yeah. only El Cerrito had that fog that would always come in. Yeah. No, El Cerrito, I mean, um, Vallejo has the heritage areas where there's some beautiful, wonderful old homes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I still, I used to, when I could, walk all around town. Mm -hmm. I'd walk through the alleyways and pick flowers and stuff. I used to love to do all that. Can't do it now, yeah. but um, it's... Uh, has some you know interesting parts. Yeah, and the, there's the architecture having from the city having been here for so long. Mm -hmm. With the mm -hmm. well, they do a lot of filming here. Yeah, they've done. Um, uh, they did a TV uh, series here. They down right downtown Georgia Street. And, the Thirteen uh, Reasons Why, and then they've done. They did. Um, they filmed some of uh, the Bumblebee. That's one of What's the Transformer that? movies. Oh really? Yeah, that was on Mare Island. They've done huh. some stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, because it definitely, like some of the Midwestern towns and all that, has probably a lot of it stayed the same. I mm -hmm. guess I don't know that much about Vallejo, but uh, it has that that worn look in, mm -hmm. in areas, and they do commercials here and stuff, so Vallejo, uh, is, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting town. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <laughs> well, we're going to go have a burger. <laughs> I could eat. Can you eat? I, I can try. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for this interview. Oh, you're welcome. And, um, fun to talk. It's fun to talk to Nance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be done because that interview, that um, alarm's getting on my nerves. Oh. So it's not. For, they're not coming for us though. <laughs> well, maybe it's that guy <laughs> from Mare Island. Yeah, doesn't really want us sitting anywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Bye bye.